strange craft for a strange voyage. HMAS Labion is ready to leave Melbourne with a relieving party of 12 scientists who will spend a year on Heard Island, the Australian research station in the sub-Antarctic. Heading south on the 3,700-mile adventure, Labion's skipper is Lieutenant Commander Dixon. The vehicle deck of the former tank landing craft makes a good gymnasium to keep the personnel fit and active. In the wardroom, the expedition leader, Mr. Philip Law, is already planning. Ki Ui is a Chinese biologist from Perth University. When we sight an iceberg, we know that the Antarctic is really near, although we're only halfway to Heard Island. But now Heard Island itself is looming up, with Big Ben Mountain towering 9,000 feet above sea level. For the newcomers, one of the few sunny days turns on a sightseeing welcome. HMAS Labuan anchors in Atlas Cove, site of the expedition's permanent camp. Twelve men can get through a lot of stores in a year, and the first job is to unload 120 tons of food, fuel oil, radio and engine parts. The cargo is ferried to the island by army ducks. The new party will live on this frigid, rocky outpost where the South Pole is nearer than home, and their closest neighbours are some South African meteorologists 1,400 miles to the west. But the local inhabitants always turn on a warm, if inquisitive, welcome, with the invitations reading white tie and tail. A fur seal is another member of the reception committee, and we have no trouble in getting close to a rookery of skewer gulls, the scavengers of the island. Twelve months' reading will soon make a dent in that library. Campbell Drury demonstrates the homemade wireless with which he used to contact Australia. Dr. Gilchrist supervises violet ray treatment, which is compensation for lack of sunlight. Weather expert Ozzy Watt discusses problems with his predecessors. The old instructing the new, but all fully experienced technicians. 